Mr. President, members of the City Council, and fellow citizens, welcome here this evening. I want to thank all of the folks uh, who came here in person. Thank you very much for coming. I'd like to welcome our great legislative delegation, including some new members that some of you might not have met before. Our new state senator, Kate Ives. Welcome here, Kate. <clears throat> Our state representative uh, delegation, thank you all for coming. They're all here tonight, starting with the dean of our delegation, state representative and House Ways and Means Committee chairman, Brian Dempsey. Mm. <laughs> representative Diana DeZoglio, Leonard Mira, and Linda Dean Campbell, thank you all for coming here this tonight. I'd also like to welcome representatives from United States Senator Elizabeth Warren and Congresswoman Nikki Songus's office. Thank you very much for coming here this evening. <laughs> Fellow citizens, when I first addressed you a few years back, the city that we saw that night looked a great deal different than the city we see here tonight. Before the Great Recession, we faced the largest municipal debt in the 350-year history of Massachusetts and the very real prospect that we would go into receivership. When I first addressed you, our reserves were depleted. Our bond rating was tied for the lowest in the state. Our high school needed millions of dollars that we just didn't have for repairs just to keep its accreditation. And not a single old factory building downtown had been rehabbed in decades. When I first spoke to you, our goals were really very modest. Survive and avoid receivership. Tonight, we see a very different picture of our city. Less than a decade later, our state-of-the-art high school is fully restored at a small fraction of the cost paid by other cities. Our bond rating has gone up twice and today stands at its highest level in a decade. This past year, the bond rating companies also raised what's called our bond outlook. Tonight, old factory buildings stand proud as new housings. Investors want to build a new boutique hotel in our city. I'm here tonight to report on our success, but also to outline a plan and a vision for tomorrow so that our best days will lie ahead. Our success didn't happen by accident. It happened because all of us, including the folks in this room, had a vision, a plan, worked together to make that plan a success. Turning the city around required us, first and foremost, to hold the line on spending. This wasn't always easy. There were bumps and some rather heated arguments along the road. But we held firm, refused to spend what we didn't have. Our budget increases were less than half what they had been in previous administrations. And over the years, we cut 26% of our workforce and asked our employees to do more with less. And to their credit, they did. When we were done, we had the lowest number of employees per capita of any city our size in the state. No one else even came close. Then we asked our employees to work with us to achieve new health care savings. Last year alone, we saved $1.1 million in health care costs. And over the years, we've saved $11 million by changing health care plans. Tonight, I thank the employees of our city for their sacrifices, for working with us over the years. I know it hasn't been easy, but your hard work and sacrifice hasn't gone unnoticed and is deeply appreciated. Thank you to the employees of our city. A key part of our success over the years has been the help we received from the state of Massachusetts. Over the years, the state has contributed over $9 million to help pay the Hale debt. We thank our state delegation, past and present, and particularly State Representative Brian Dempsey, whose work was critical to our success. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The third part of our plan, and the one I want to concentrate on tonight, the third part of our plan to turn Havel around was to use zoning as a positive tool to bring more investment to our city and to rebuild our tax base. We rezoned downtown to become the first city in the state to encourage new housing near train stations. Then we rezoned the outskirts of our city to allow for big box retail stores. Downtown rezoning has brought in $150 million of new public and private investment to our downtown, 850 new residents, 
and a number of new restaurants, including two that opened just this past year, Butch's Uptown and the Barking Dog Ale House. Tonight I announced that we have a new restaurant and sports pub opening downtown in the spot where those of us who have been around for a few years once called the Hotel Whittier. <laughs> This new restaurant is going to be called Coaches, and I'd like to welcome the owners here tonight, Charles DeFelice, Joan, and Jody Kaskowitz. Thank you, and welcome to our city. We're thrilled to have you. All this new investment has brought in a total of $4.6 million in new real estate property taxes over the years, and $2 million in new meals tax revenue over the years. Revenue that was crucial to keeping our city safe and affordable. Rezoning of the outskirts of the city brought in an additional five and a half million dollars in new tax revenue. Altogether, rezoning and the meal tax revenue brought in a total of 12 million dollars over the years. We know that rezoning can work, can bring in new investment. It doesn't always work. We haven't batted a thousand, but it can work. And tonight, we need to learn from our success. Tonight, I announce a series of new zoning initiatives that will give us the tools to expand our success to the waterfront, to our industrial parks, and to the Little River. This second phase of rezoning plans already started when we announced and the council adopted our plans to rezone Merrimack Street. Now, we've already come a long way downtown, but there's more to come, and the best days lie ahead. We're excited that UMass Lowell is going to be locating a campus in the downtown starting this fall. And we thank Chancellor Marty Meehan, who can't be here tonight, and again, Representative Brian Dempsey for making that happen. There's more to come downtown. Last year, the Massachusetts legislature adopted a new law called General Laws Chapter 40V to encourage market rate housing in the downtown. Next week, I'll ask the City Council to adopt that new law and to designate Merrimack Street and parts of Bradford as our 40V district to encourage market rate housing in the downtown and along the Merrimack River. Then next month, I'll ask the City Council to work with me to rezone the north side of Merrimack Street to allow for artists' lofts on the upper floors. Our rezoning initiatives start downtown but they cannot end downtown. If we want our city to thrive and move to the next level, we need to use the zoning lessons we learned from downtown in other parts of the city. We need to start along the banks of the Merrimack. The Merrimack River is our most precious asset and has been from the time the first settlers used it to navigate here. Within the next few weeks, I'll introduce a zoning plan to rezone both sides of the Merrimack to encourage investment in these areas and to make certain the public always has access to the river. The riverfront zoning plan that I'll introduce will divide the areas along the river into seven different zones with a separate plan for each zone. We'll start in the old factory areas on the Bradford side of the river, in areas where workers worked at places that some have forgotten, like Coyton Worth and Tanning, Ornstein Heel, and the Havel Paperboard. Those areas are still zoned for industrial use, but we know that industry moved long ago to the industrial parks. We need to update our zoning laws to keep pace with the new economic reality. Next month, I'll ask the council to rezone those areas so that someday these areas along the water, these abandoned factory buildings, can see revitalization much as the old factory buildings downtown did. Now these old industrial zones along the waterfront include one property that the city of Havel owns, an abandoned site where hundreds of workers once worked at the Ornstein Heel factory. Next month, the city will put out a request for proposals to encourage a public-private partnership that will allow redevelopment of the Ornstein Heel site so long as the developer will allow all of our citizens to have access to the river. The rezoning plans that I introduce, announce this evening, will have a different look and a different flavor for each of the seven zones along the river. On Water Street, we'll encourage residential, retail, and mixed use. Along the rail trail in Bradford, 
will encourage residences and businesses. On Merrimack Street, will encourage retail, commercial, mixed use, and artist lofts. The zones are different, but there's one constant. If you allow for public access, we will eliminate red tape and regulatory barriers because the river belongs to all of us, not just to those fortunate and love to live next to it. Now, the Merrimack River is our greatest asset, but it's not our only asset or our only river. We have a second great asset known as Little River. Little River was once its own center of commerce and industry. The city's first mill building, a cotton mill, started there in 1800, decades before the shoe industry started in Haverhill. Thousands of people worked along Little River in places with names like Hale's Factory and Clark's Mill, and in later years in places like Little River Dyers and Dietech. But over the years, the buildings along Little River have fallen into disrepair. Some of them have become abandoned, abandoned fire traps which add nothing in jobs and little in tax revenues. In the next few months, I'll ask the City Council to rezone Stephen Street along Little River and to extend our transit-oriented development zone to that area. Now, tonight, we have with us the first of what we hope are a series of investors interested in redeveloping and investing in Little River. I'm happy to introduce tonight Richard Relic and Colin O'Keefe from the Boston firm of Art Street Development, LLC, who wish to develop the old Stevens Mill on, Arch on Stevens Street. Are they here? Thank you very much. Mm. <laughs> Welcome to Haverhill. This proposed redevelopment of Little River on Stephen Street Mill has a long way to go before conclusion, but it's a multi-million dollar investment in our city, every bit as important as the investments in the old shops downtown. And if it occurs, it'll redevelop that district just as the old shoe factory buildings were redeveloped. These rezoning plans are only the start. We need to look at every zone in our city to see which areas we want to preserve and which areas, like Little River, we want to encourage reinvestment. In the next few weeks, I will appoint a new zoning advisory committee to take a new look at zoning beside the highways, to look at our laws on cluster zoning, and to examine new tools to protect our environment, like low-impact development to help us encourage investment in our city while still preserving our natural resources. New investment brings new revenues. It brings new jobs. But it does something even more important. It helps to keep our city affordable and helps to improve the quality of life for all of our citizens. Now, when we first started, the tax bills for the average single-family residential taxpayer in Havel were well above the state average. Today, the average single-family residential tax bill in Havel is well below the state average and among the lowest in Essex County, and that's where we want to keep it. Our improved financial position has also helped us to improve the quality of life for our citizens. Today, our schools have improved. Our parks and playgrounds are better. Our city is cleaner and safer, but there's more to do. We must start with public safety because the first job of government is to keep its city safe. We've consistently asked our police department to do more with less, and they have. Today, thanks to the hard work of the men and women in the Havel Police Department, I can report that for the second year in a row, crime is down. Over the past two years, overall crime in Havel was down 13%, which translates into hundreds of fewer crimes. Quality of life crimes are down even more. Burglaries are down 52% over the past two years. None of this happened by accident. It happened because the Havel Police Department was proactive. They increased police patrols in the inner city, worked with the kids in our gang resistance program, and worked proactively to keep us safe. But we know there's more to do. This year, we swore in three new police officers we're very honored to have them with us this evening. I'd ask them to please raise their hands and be recognized. Thank you for your service and welcome to the force. We're doing more, but we know we need to do more still. 
And tonight I announced that we're going to be adding to our police force. And next month, I'll ask the city council to approve a supplemental budget to add two more officers to our force. Improving quality of life in our city is our goal, and this has to include improving the quality of public education. Over the years, we've spent over $43 million on capital improvements to our high school and to school buildings throughout the city. This year, we're spending $6 million to make improvement in our middle and elementary schools. But there is one school that can't so easily or readily be fixed, the Hunking School. We're in the process of doing a feasibility study for a new school, and if the study confirms that a new school is needed, next year we will ask our voters to allow us to build a new school in Bradford. This isn't just an education issue. It's an issue that affects all of the property values of all of us here in the city, and an issue that we all need to support. But the most important thing that happens in education isn't what happens to the building, it's what happens in the building. Over the years, our math scores are up 13%, our graduation rate is up, and our dropout rate is down. But we have more to do. This year, thanks to the hard work of Superintendent Jim Scully, we have renewed emphasis on academics. Uh, using federal grant money, today 550 students who need help are being tutored after school to improve their MCAS results. Our mid-year testing shows we're making progress, but we know there's more to do. Our success as a city depends upon having a great education system. We need to expand our summer school program and make it mandatory, not optional. And we need to expand our tutoring program so that it includes in-school tutoring. Our plan to improve the quality of life of our citizens has to include our senior citizens. We know that many senior citizens use the Citizen Center. And this year, we'll start with a series of major improvements to our Citizen Center. We can't do everything, but we can do more there than has been done in decades. Improving our quality of life means improving our parks and playgrounds, often used by our young families. In the past few years, we've brought swing sets back to our playgrounds. We've installed new bathrooms. And last year, the George Washington Landing Park in Bradford became our first new playground in decades. This year, we'll do even more. Tonight, I announce a park improvement program to make improvements to parks and playgrounds throughout the city. At Swayze Field, thanks to a state grant and to our own community development block grant money, we'll install a new spray and splash park, put in new ball fields and a new walking trail. At Portland Street, we'll upgrade the playground equipment, and later this year, I will ask the council to approve appropriations to make improvements to other parks, such as Riverside Park and to GAR Park right across from City Hall. But it is along the waterfront where our vision for an improved quality of life can make the most difference. Last year, we broke ground on a new rail trail along the Merrimack. This year, we'll start on a series of improvements to that trail to install new landscaping, new benches, and new playgrounds, and new paths for walking and biking. Our vision is that someday our children and grandchildren will enjoy their own emerald necklace of parks and walkways along the river, from the train station in Bradford all the way to Groveland. This year, this vision will take years to complete, but it's a vision worth pursuing. I'm reminded of the Chinese proverb that the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. We're taking that step now. Tonight I see a very different city than I saw just a few years ago. Tonight in a city where I once saw young people leaving in droves, I see young people returning in droves to live downtown. Where I once saw a high school that was losing its accreditation, Tonight, I see a fully accredited, state-of-the-art high school. Where I once saw a city where business was leaving, tonight I see investors coming back to our city to bring new hotels, redevelop old mill buildings, and bring new restaurants. Where I once saw a city on the verge of receivership, tonight I see a city on the verge of greatness. We still have our difficulties, 
We still have our problems to face and our mountains to climb. But tonight, I sense a new confidence that we have done better and that we will meet those challenges. Tonight, I can confidently report to you, to the citizens of Havel, that the state of our city is strong. And tonight, I can report to you that for all of our progress, our best days lies ahead. Thank you, and thank you for listening here this evening. Thank you very much.